I want to talk to you guys about my first hostel experience. My very first hostel experience. Um, it's something that, you know, for me, I've never really looked forward to staying in a hostel. I said years ago, you know, if I were ever to stay in a hostel, it would have been five years ago, maybe, maybe like 10 years ago in my early 20s. Now, when I decided to do this trip, I knew that things were going to have to change and I would have to change my stance on that. So my flight tomorrow leaves Auckland at 7.45 in the morning. Now, earlier today, I dropped off my camper van at the, at the rental agency. I'm kind of sad on how this worked out. My original plan was to stay in the camper van up until the day I was supposed to leave New Zealand. But it turns out the camper van rental company doesn't open till 8 a.m. in the morning and my flight is at 7.45. Now when I called them to see if they had a drop-off, a car drop-off or a key drop-off, uh, they didn't. And I guess it's different because it's, a, it's an RV camper van it's more of a, an involved process they said that it was no longer an option so what I had to do was I had to drop the camper van off one day earlier which would mean I would have to find one night's accommodation somewhere since my flight was leaving so early in the morning I thought it'd be good a good idea to stay nice and close to the airport so I wouldn't have to rush I wouldn't have to spend more money on on uh, on transportation to the airport so I found a hostel and the hostel was really close to the airport. It was a, I think it's about a five minute drive, which is pretty good, right? So that worked. It was the perfect opportunity to stay in a hostel. It definitely hasn't been something that I've been too excited about. Just because one, I'm a big time germaphobe. Two, I fear for my belongings, especially because I'm traveling with camera gear. I've talked to a lot of people who have stayed in hostels and you know, they've said good things. It's a great way to meet people. You know, you save on money, you save a lot of money, you save on accommodation, which is always a good thing, especially if you're doing long-term travel. Call the hostel and ask them, hey, do you guys have any lockers, any storage systems, any storage solutions? They said no. And I said, okay. Anyways, whatever, it's one night. I'm there for a couple hours. I'm planning to leave the hostel at 3.50 and they do offer free a uh, free shuttle service to the airport so that's one one plus anyways when i get to the front desk the front desk is beautiful it's nice i'm like what and then i realize uh, the hostel is shared between a hotel motel and a hostel first impression is good maybe the hostel's not so bad i check in same desk I get my key and the lady directed me all the way to my to my hostel it was in the back of the the, the property and it's just what you expect, right? So there's a communal kitchen, um, living room, all that stuff. And within the hostel area, there's all these separate rooms. So one, I needed my key to get into the, the hostel, into the living room. Two, I needed my key, uh, same key to get into my room. And my room has seven beds, seven people staying in one room, which I'm okay with. Not really about the people. Again, it's more about the possessions. And at the end of the day, possessions are possession. Things are things. Things can always be replaced if they need be. And yeah, so when I get there, there's nobody in the living room, which is cool. I'm like, hey, got the place to myself. And then when I open up the room, I tap my key on the door. Door unlocks, beep, beep. Bust open the door, kick open the door so hard, turn the lights on. I'm like, what am I working with? I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, all right. And Turns out there's a guy sleeping on a bed. I totally woke him up. 4 p.m. in the afternoon, I totally woke this guy up. I was so loud. <laughs> Felt so bad, I was like, ah! close the door. He had his, he had his uh, eye mask on, so that was good. I was a bit inconsiderate, but you know, I didn't know the etiquette. It's my first time in a shared dorm just like that. And yeah, I made my bed. There's sheets on the bed, a pillowcase for my pillow, and one of those classic uh, fleece style brown blankets. So and my friend told me, whatever you do, don't put your bag on the bed just in case there's bed bugs and you don't want to be, you don't want to be transporting them bed bugs all over the world. And that's my hostel experience so far. We'll see. We'll give you a quick update in a little while. I checked into the hotel. My room's not quite ready, but in the meantime, they were able to get me into the club lounge. I just want to show you this view. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. 
Welcome to Australia. Welcome to Sydney. We're here for a short time, but it's going to be a good time. This is a nice treat, a nice upgrade from the hostel experience that I had last night. And let me tell you, okay, I need to, to, need to give you an update here. Overall, <laughs> my experience with the, the hostel was all right, okay? It wasn't my favorite. Um, there was a guy in the room, one of the seven guys that shared the room. He was a local, but he lived on the other side of the country, and he, he stayed in that, in that hostel pretty long term. And he was a really cool guy. He actually was an orc in Lord of the Rings, in the Two Towers. So that was pretty cool to, to meet a guy who's a background performer, does some acting work on the side as well. But he was one of the first ones to go to bed. And when we went into the room, you know, all we heard was the sound of a choking walrus all night long. Oh my goodness. Non-stop snoring, it was just out of control. Me and this guy from Chile, his name is Fernando. We ran, ran into each other at the airport this morning and we just started talking. And I told him it was my very first hostel experience. And he was like, oh, that can't be your first hostel experience. That was not a good one. And I'm like, really? It gets better than that? Thank goodness. Wow, it was just so loud and so much movement. Someone turned the heater on in the middle of the night. When you have seven people cooped up in a little room and the heater's going and you have the sound of this this orangutan making weird noises and just choking on his own tonsils just you know that was not pleasant i kind of have a soft spot for snores because sometimes i do i do snore from time to time but uh fernando he told me he's like rest assured mike it gets better a lot of hostels are a lot nicer you know, the one we were at last night, the only reason why I was so busy is because it's lo located right at the airport. A lot of people that stay at that hostel were all in transit, either have early morning flights or uh, fly in really late at night and they just need a place to crash. So, wasn't my, the best first experience and thank goodness for Fernando giving me that sense of comfort, letting me know that it does get better. Overall, it was really good. I met some cool people. I met Fernando from Chile. Even the walrus man, Mr. Walrus. Cool guy, but um, just a little tough to sleep at night. There was one girl, she checked in, she was from London. <laughs> when she checked into the hostel, a whole bunch of us were in the living room. And when she walked in, she went straight to the bathroom. She came out into the living room and she said, sorry guys, I'm just so tired, I just need to crash goes into the room and all night, I don't think she slept because I could just see her face glowing. She was on her cell phone the entire night. At least every time I looked over, you could see her face just illuminated with her cell phone. And I don't think anybody slept in that room. 